What's going on everyone? My name's Tenebris Infinite and something cool happened just recently for me in Generation Zero. I was going off and I was clearing out a whole bunch of rifles and I noticed there were no clothing schematics dropping at all. And so that got me wondering, do I maybe have all of the clothing schematics here in the game? And it turns out I do! I managed to collect them along the way here. This has been like, I don't even know man, a years long process. But it's pretty awesome to finally have all of the clothing schematics up to the five crown level. And so I thought today it would be really fun to put together some outfits with these schematics and kind of put them through some tests here and put them through their paces and show you dudes the benefits of having fully upgraded clothing here in Generation Zero. So there are two clothing schematics I'd like to talk about first before we start getting into the big batches of them. And that is the athletic clothing schematics as well as the padded clothing schematics. The athletic schematics provide a jump boost which when stacked together provide a pretty hefty 14% jump boost and then the padded provide a flat, I believe, 20% damage reduction uh, in terms of fall damage, which both translate to quite an impressive uh, change here in Generation Zero. In terms of our jump boost, we're able to perform jumps that are normally, like, completely impossible, like jumping all the way up from this guy up onto the top here. Now we'll take off our jump boost stuff really quickly. Go to her pants, just put on something like that, put on something like that, and try to make the same jump here, trying to get up on top of this guy. And you can see that we can totally not make that jump. So we got like a solid, maybe foot in the air from having both of our jump boosts stacked together. Let's do a really quick side-by-side -side comparison here of the vertical height that you're gaining from that jump boost. So with that extra 14% jump boost, you get like almost an extra foot of height on your vertical. Next up, we're gonna check out the padded shoes. So I've come on down to Itervik because there's a pretty reliable rock jump test that we could do for a low fall height. And then we'll go off to a church and use a church rooftop for a high fall height. So you could see that the padding actually does a pretty okay amount. It'll save you like eight to 10 health somewhere along the way. It might even actually save you from a death fall by like maybe a half a foot or something like that. It gives a pretty decent damage reduction. Socks with sandals, man. It's all the extra padding you need. All of that testing was with my uh, engineer, so only a couple health upgrades. Let's see what it looks like with our Vanguard now. 62, man. Over half. So now we're going to start looking at the damage reductions. So that is fire, blast, and bullet damage reductions. And we're going to do that on our Vanguard here so that we can kind of see what the upper limit is having the Vanguard stats alongside the additional 20% resistances. So this is on skirmish difficulty uh, with full bullet damage reduction. Hey boyo, shoot me once. Okay, he shot me more than once. That's okay though. Alright, one bullet takes us down to 88 with the full set on. And one bullet takes us down to 88 with none of the set on. Just to make extra triple sure here, we're going to take one more bullet. But the truth and the sad reality is that it seems like the bullet damage reduction schematic is not working. Because even with a mixture of bullet resistance and no bullet resistance, our damage count is still the exact same. Okay, but... 
on 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 the plus side, fire resistance seems to really work. You don't take damage from the environmental fire hazards. Seemingly, with a full kit here. Let's give this a proper test. Yeah, dude, bathe me in flames. So let's get ourselves just maybe hopefully one hunter over here if we can. It seems like he's coming on through, which is nice. That's the good thing about these sniper rifles. You can really, oh! Well, that was a vibe check. Let, let's get back to this guy. Man, I want you to light me on fire. Not explode me. There you are. You sick. All right, come on. Well, flamethrower still hurt. All right, flamethrower. Oh, okay. All right, so it didn't really make that much of a damn. Okay, stop it. Jeez, man. They don't flamethrower for like five minutes and then when you ask them to, they all do it at once. So this is just really confusing. I'm just, I'm just totally confused as per usual by Generation Zero's weird systems. Um, I guess maybe their flamethrowers don't count as a flamethrower. They are interdimensional, but I didn't think that it would mean that they didn't count as fire damage. Unless if like, oh, it just, it doesn't make sense. Why are we not taking damage from, uh, you know, environmental fire, but we're taking the exact same amount of damage from flamethrowers as if we were not wearing a fireproof outfit at all. It boggles the mind. Anyway, it's time for explosions. Let's go. Dude, we actually survived, though. Sick. Okay, same test without any explosion resistance clothing. Banked off the car, nice. Actually took less damage that time. Explosions make no sense. All right, point blank range with an explosive gas can. How much damage is this thing gonna do? All right, solid 25. Okay, and no explosion uh, resistance stuff. A Little bit more damage. Okay, cool. Dang it, Tex. All right, so it does a lot of damage, obviously. All right, and getting back to it with the uh, Child of the Apocalypse explosion proof set. Still does a ton of damage. Oh, buddy. Alrighty, well, next up, let's try out the uh, two stealth buffs. First off, the visibility, and then second off, the noise reduction. Okay, so, prone test. We're able to move pretty much like right beside these guys. Not noticing a thing, which is pretty excellent. Now, when you're prone, you do get a massive boost in stealth, but the reason why I'm using prone is that uh, I don't have any stealth skills on this build. So this kind of shows that you're able to prone, and he only noticed me there. Like, it took quite a while for him to actually notice me. And if I wasn't wearing this stuff, uh, they would actually notice me pretty quickly if I was moving around and kind of like in their field of view. Allow me to demonstrate now with uh, other clothing. Luckily enough though, prone in itself is basically the only stealth skill you need in Generation Zero. Now though, for the one that I'm really excited to see if there's any sort of a positive benefit from, the noise reduction. Oh, where is the experimental jacket? There we go. So now with a full noise reduction set, let's see what the difference is. Audibly, when we move around, it doesn't sound like our noises are making any less noise. I kind of want the uh, harvester to turn around 
so that that way I could see if I could just run up to him without being spotted. Of course, there is the glitchy spotted from combat you aren't in kind of stuff. I think ultimately, if you're trying to make some sort of a stealth build, you're going to want to do a combination of both. But it really does seem like the noise reduction does quite a bit here. It definitely took him a while to notice us while we were just kind of casually walking around behind him. But definitely when it comes to stealth, it seems like you want to cover both your noise and your visibility in order to get the most out of things. So I thought, what the heck, I have this dummy character sitting here with all the skills but none of them placed. So I might as well take this character, make us a bit of a stealth build here. You guys are getting a pretty jam-packed video. Uh, make us a bit of a stealth build here and then try out putting on a combination of the two outfits and uh, see if that does us any better. By the way, if you're wondering how I grinded up a character from level 1 to the max level without spending a single skill point, I'd be down to make a video on that. That would be pretty fun, I think. Okay, so my first shot at making a stealth build here in Generation Zero. Uh, we went with the commando skill uh, so that we could get that damage bonus. Uh, pretty much maxed out the whole right side of the survival skill tree here because they're all related to stealth. Got ourselves steady feet just in case if things go wrong. Uh, then over in the combat tree, we focused on the left hand side over here, uh, going all the way down to the make him count skill, because uh, that's going to benefit our stealth probably the most. Gives the highest base damage increase, which stacked with commando might lead to some pretty decent damage output. And then just a, a little bit of trivial skill spending on the right hand side to get up to armor damage there. Really, dude, I cannot wait until we maybe get like a max level increase or a whole new skill system to work with. It would be a lot of fun to be able to use more of these skills here in the game. There we go. He's down. And the other ones are not engaging us. Very nice. We got the good old doggos down in Turnboto scans. We're doing pretty okay. Pretty okay. Normally they would have detected us from that, I think. Let's try going prone here. Alright, let's try some stealth now with, like, a weapon totally designed for stealth with the AT wad here. Gonna do some close range stealth. None the wiser. Alright, but this guy, because we're behind the visual cover of the bush, doing okay. Visual cover of the magical floating tree, we're doing okay. Alright, sweet. But anyway, this isn't a video about stealth, it's a video about clothing schematics. And the real question, I guess, is, are clothing schematics worth your time? Do you want to grind them out? And I'd say, right now, you probably do not, because a lot of them don't seem to work properly, or if they do work properly, they maybe just aren't having enough of an effect to be worth your time. There are some that are totally worth your time, like the jump boost and the, the padded, uh, padded shoes for reducing fall damage and stuff. But in the end, sadly, because it's all random chance and you can't ensure that you're going to pick up those schematics, 
Uh, it's not entirely worth it at this point in time to go off and grind these out and spend hundreds and hundreds of resources on building up a bunch of five crown gear. Uh, so hopefully in the future we'll see this addressed, we'll see this hopefully maybe fixed, tweaked up, or explained. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for watching my dudes, and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.